Morning, everyone. We're just going to give everyone just a few more seconds to jump on. It's nice to see everyone jumping on and I appreciate everyone who are joining in groups. It really is helpful um, that we still make this an opportunity for us to gather together. So we're gonna just give about 30 more sec seconds and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. If I could ask if you're gra gathered in a group, could someone head towards the mute button? I want to unmute some of you all for a second. So when I call your name in the name of your school, just go ahead and unmute. Well, welcome everyone. So excited to see you. I see so many great faces out there gathered as staff and some of you individually and wherever you are we're just so excited that you're here to join us for the beginning of our amazing 2022 2023 school year i think when we were all little kids that sound like something that the jetsons would say the 2022 2023 school year and i think i saw something the other day that um what is the dad on the Jetsons, his birthday, he would have been 40 this year or something. And it's just crazy to think that we're not flying around in the air. And um, well, I was flying around this summer and lost all my luggage. So that was an exciting part of my summer. But I just want to shout out, I see that there is KT Murphy there. Can we unmute KT Murphy? Can we hear some shouts that we're so excited to be back to school? Thanks, KT Murphy. How about Dolan? Dolan, are you out there? All right, Dolan. They're, they're loud and mighty. That's great. Let's see what Stanford High can do. Thanks, Stanford High. Woohoo! I appreciate that. Toquam, I see you. Toquam, are you out there? How about Schofield? I see Schofields there. Oh, there's adult ed, small and mighty. <laughs> That's great. I, I, I was really excited to be back. Hey, Rogers, I think I saw you all in your auditorium. Welcome, Rogers. Westover, I know you are loud and mighty. Yeah, here we go. There's Westover. Welcome, Westover. It's great to see you. It is so wonderful. <laughs> Hi, 
there's the teaching and learning department. Hey, teaching and learning, do you want to give us a Learning, they're small but mighty, and a lot of you all have some of their um, members out in your buildings right now, so they appreciate that. Hey, Strawberry Hill, are you there? <laughs> Welcome, Strawberry Hill. Hey, about how about Rip? Do I see Rip? Rip, are you there? There you are. Thank you so much. Hey, I see our transition team there. Transition team, can you unmute yourself? Oh, uh, we're having trouble hearing them, but we so appreciate everyone that's out there today. I see a couple of people who are there by themselves today. Lorraine Olson is here with us today, who I can't thank her enough for getting me out of the office every Monday this summer for Miles and Smiles. We went walking around the cove and had a great time. Oh, I think I see Clune in there waving and saying hello. Well, thank you all so much. We really, really appreciate all that you're doing and that you're here. You know, I just want to start with welcoming all of our new teachers to the district. We have, as of last night, thank you, Melissa Wills and all of the people over in the HR department, Charmaine, for jumping right in and doing an amazing job. I will tell you, we have 194 new staff members. So I want you to turn because you must be sitting close to someone who's new right now. Can you just say welcome, welcome to Stanford. We really appreciate that you're here. And all of the new teachers help me in welcoming back all of our staff members who for the last couple of years have just done an amazing job of supporting our staff, our students and our families. So just turn to one of our returning uh, members of our staff and say, we appreciate you so much because we do. So we are going to get started and um, really have some time to tell you how much we appreciate you and how we hope that next year we are back in Stanford High Stadium really celebrating together. It's just hard to believe that it's been three years since we've been able to gather as a group and we want to be able to do that. So just really excited about that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get us started because I know we only have 30 minutes here together, so I want to get through our whole program. All right. The focus of our convocation today is just to let you know that we see you. Um, it is something that I've been thinking about all summer as we think about coming back together, this has been a complicated time for the field of education. And I want you to know that we see you and that we appreciate you as educators. There was a reason that we all decided that we wanted to go into education. And I'm talking about all of us. Those of you who aren't teachers, there are many other places that you could work. You could work any place else. If you're a nurse, you could work at the hospital, you can work any place else in this community, but you choose to work for Stanford Public Schools. You choose to work in the field of education and we want you to know how much we appreciate that. So we want to welcome you and thank you. You know, last year was just a complicated year. I talked to a lot of people um, over the summer and what we decided is that Although the COVID year of the 2021 school year was complicated, last year, 21-22 was even more complicated because there was so many changes all the time. And sometimes we sit back and we think, did we accomplish anything last year? I'm not sure. But the, in reality is that we really accomplished a lot. So I have a little video to show you to show just the amazing things that all of you all did last year that really made a huge difference for our students and our families and some of our other staff members. So if you'll just give me a moment, I'm going to queue up the video.
Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear the music.
just think we all need to give everyone a hand a round of applause for all the amazing things that we did. And sometimes it is difficult and we only can remember what went wrong, but there were a really lot of things that went right last year. And that is just a small example. And we have others of these that will be included in our annual report because we really think it's important for us to really highlight the amazing things that are happening out in our buildings every day. I'm gonna share my screen one more time and just walk you through some other things that I just want us to think about as we enter this school year. Hold on one second, I'm going to get back up and running. So I've been doing a lot of reading and I think that we all know that there are a lot of people who are leaving the profession and even deciding not to enter the profession. And when we look at this data that from 2008 to 2018, that almost a third of our education departments at different universities were reporting that there was a decline in the amount of people who are finishing education programs. It just means that we have to figure out how we can continue to think about why we went into this profession and why it is so important to us. And as I was saying earlier, is that we all could choose a different profession, right? Even as classroom teachers or custodians or paraprofessionals, there are many other things that we could go into to do, use our talents in a different way. But we chose the field of education for a particular reason. And I will tell you that I remember when I decided that I wanted to be a teacher. I was in the sixth grade and it's so funny that I was looking at a picture of myself in fifth grade, so just a year before that, and I couldn't get it to come up on the screen, but I'm going to try to show it to you off of my phone because I just want you to see what I look like in the fifth grade. Can everyone see this? This is Temu in the fifth grade, Dr. Lucero, the future Dr. Lucero. <laughs> And it just is, you know, when I look back at that picture and you think that long ago, I decided after spending some time in volunteering um, at um, Stepping Stone Center, which was a, a center for students with special needs. And I spent every summer there from the time I was in sixth grade going into seventh grade until I graduated from high school. And I just knew that I enjoyed working with children. And I knew that I enjoyed learning, ch watching children learn and grow and, and meeting milestones. And that was an exciting time for me. And so just thinking, and I want you all to continue to think about what is it that made me go into education? I was talking to the administrators about this the other day, and some of them shared stories of a teacher that inspired them, and that's why they became an educator. Some people talked about the fact that they were in different careers and decided to come back to education, and I know that's the case of many of our new teachers who have decided to change the field that they wanted to be in and join us in the field of education. And so it's such an exciting time if we think about it, because it's a time that we can really reimagine the field of education and how we might want to do things a little bit differently. So I am really excited to take this moment in time and share one of your colleagues' stories of why he became a teacher. John Ringel was supposed to be here with me this morning, but with some craziness that has gone on with me this week. Um, and I'm just so happy and blessed to be sitting in the seat right now because of the complicated week I had. Um, he was not able to join me here live, but he was um, gracious enough to send me a video. So I am going to play that at this time. Good morning, everybody. I'm John Ringel. Hello. And I had the honor of uh, being chosen as Stanford's 2022-2023 Teacher of the Year. Um, yeah. So what that means, aside uh, from being an honor, is that I uh, 
I'm a teacher like you, you know, here in Stanford, and that means I'm also uh, sitting somewhere in my building right now watching this convocation, uh, and that means that just like you, I also uh, want me to not take a long time and be quick so that you can go do important stuff. So I'm with you on that. I will keep this as brief as I can. I don't really have anything um, crazy that I need to tell you that's going to take a long time, so that's good. Um, All right. I'm not uh, also in that spirit going to go over my whole kind of like career history, worked at Stanford High, I teach English, um, and, uh, you know, but teachers' resumes are not very interesting, so I'll keep it at that. Um, But I will say I've only been doing it for 13 years, and I'm 41 now, so uh, if you're doing math, you realize I didn't uh, go into it straight out of college. Correct. I was a career change uh, person. Um, for a while, I worked in the paint industry, mixing and uh, delivering and selling paint, and that was pretty terrible. I also um, worked in a music store for a while, selling musical instruments and like teaching lessons, um, which I also didn't really like. Although the one good thing there was I met my wife working there, and she kind of encouraged me, maybe I should go back to school and become a teacher, um, which didn't sound like a bad idea. So I did it and um, ended up being, of course, one of the one of the better decisions in my life, one of the best thing that I've ever decided to do, I would say. Um, so yeah, um, given my background of having uh, been like a career changer or something, I guess the only message I really have for you all uh, watching this today, especially to people who this has been your only job, is that um, this job is a lot better than so many other jobs and careers out there in quite a few ways. Um, I'm going to take a second to give a shout out to my friend Rich Frateroli, who works with me at Stanford High School, who used to be a roofer uh, before he went back and became a teacher, which is like probably maybe my favorite example of how other jobs are so terrible. But you don't have to have been a roofer to know what I mean. Um, Like on a very basic kind of like selfish level, um, I mean, we have good benefits. We have good job security. We have excellent hours. I mean, it's kind of early, but we're out so early. and a strong union, and really we only are, you know, we only have 180 working calendar days, or maybe like 185 in a year, like half of the days um, we don't have to go into work. So if you're just being selfish about it and looking at it on paper, like, I think it's great. Around here in particular, because, you know, the in, in this county and in Westchester County, the, the salaries are decent, are very livable. A lot, of, a lot of places, that's not the case. I recognize that. But around here, um, around here, we get paid pretty well. So I think it's just fantastic, you know, like from that perspective. And that's the stuff that drew me to being a teacher um, instead of doing whatever else I might have done in the first place. If I'm being honest, it was not like this selfless calling to help change kids. Uh, however, what I didn't realize until I've been doing it for a few years and kind of got into the swing of things is that there is this other very emotionally rewarding side to it. You actually get paid pretty well to do something very rewarding. Um, and I feel like most of the time to have those opportunities of getting those feelings, you have to volunteer or something. You have to volunteer your time at like a homeless shelter, or do you know one of those things. Um, But as teachers, we have an opportunity to feel that way uh, while we're actually like getting paid for it and making a livable wage, which is something that, you know, having worked in other careers that were sort of like monotonous and didn't help anybody other than like the owners of a store. I I don't take that for granted that it has that uh, rewarding capacity. And honestly, that's probably the reason I'm still a teacher instead of being like a fishing guide or something, uh, you know. I just don't think any other career I can think of has that balance of like benefits and time off and and just like the potential for emotionally uh, positive like interactions. So um, that's pretty much all I've got. I they told me to give you some advice, but I don't really want to tell you uh, people how to do your jobs. I'm sure I'm sure you're doing great or uh, you know working on it or whatever, figuring it out. So my only advice that I would say is just what I kind of what I just said related to job satisfaction. Okay. Uh, just kind of have perspective. I'm not saying this is not a a tough job. It's definitely hard work, okay? It can be exhausting at times. I know uh, the kids can be very annoying, of course. Uh, Colleagues can be probably even more annoying, definitely. uh, Colleagues can be more annoying even. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's great what we get to do. We have the opportunity. When you probably can remember a couple of teachers, you know, that really like had an impact on you that you still remember and think highly of to this day that you'd love to like run run into. Um, And this job that gives you that opportunity, you can be that teacher for somebody else, you know. So having worked in other careers, I just want to tell you all that I don't take that for granted. 
And uh, my advice would be that you don't do it either. Uh, don't take it for granted. It's a great opportunity. So that's all I got for today. Um, enjoy the rest of the speakers, whoever's talking after me. I hope you get some time to set up your rooms and stuff, all, all the stuff you really need to do. And uh, have a good year. Thanks, John. We really appreciate his message because we all did come into this for a particular reason and whether we did it later on as John did or knew at, you know, sixth grade, little Temu level that we wanted to do this. We all have our stories and we want to share our stories with others because there are hard times in this profession and we want to be able to share our whys and why we're doing this with one another so we remember it. We also want to take time on a regular basis as we did earlier to celebrate the fact that there are some amazing things going on out there. So there are just two more things that I wanna say and then we'll do a couple of other videos and then we will get you on your way because as John said, I know you wanna to get to setting up your classrooms. Um, I am frozen here for some reason my, um, PowerPoint isn't moving anymore. Hold on one second for me. I'm going to stop sharing and share again. Let's see if it'll go. It's not going, but that's okay. I can do it. You know, we as educators, we can... Um, Boot, reboot if we need to. So the next thing I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about is that if we're all remembering all of the wonderful reasons why we do this work, I do think that it's a good time to think about how we can celebrate this more. And all of the things that you saw earlier are from the shout outs that we have people submit and we get out to people every Friday. But we also are thinking about introducing a new segment because because we have John Ringel, who is an amazing teacher of the year, but we know that there are lots of wonderful teachers and custodians and paras and um, psychologists, social workers, um, OTPT, everyone under the sun out there doing some amazing work. And you get to see that every day. And so what we're asking you to do this year in the spirit of we see you, we want you to be on the lookout for those people and just take a few minutes to write us a little blurb about why someone you are interacting with, with during the day are really special. And we will have a We See You segment that goes along with our shout out so that we're acknowledging um, the wonderful things that are, are going on out there and the wonderful staff that we have available to us. I also want to talk about another thing that we're going to be working on this year, which is really looking at our field and reimagining what we need in order to be able to be successful as a school district. This is a very complicated job that all of us have. And because it's a complicated job and a complicated field, it's sometimes necessary for us to re-examine it and really look at it. And you heard me talk about this in my weekly message um, at the end of last year. And one of the things I talked about is that we really need to look at our staffing and we need to make sure that we have the proper staffing in all of our buildings. We're really about to go on a journey of redesigning to new or rebuilding all of our schools in Stanford. But if we don't have the proper staffing as we have K-8 models and we have K-5 models and we have two comprehensive middle schools and we have inter-district magnet schools magnet schools and our high school programs and all the pathways that we want to put in place. If those aren't staffed properly, then we will not be successful in being able to implement these programs. So I think as we're looking at all the needs of the facilities, the buildings themselves, we also need to look at what staffing is needed inside of each of those buildings. So um, I will be coming out to your buildings and John Cochran, our 
new SEA president has agreed to join me on this journey to talk with all staffs about what are some of the positions that we need to have in place so that we are able to be a efficient and effective school district. So I look forward to having these conversations with you all throughout the year. Now, because we're hitting nine o'clock, there are some other videos that we want to share with you, but we're going to do that virtually. So you will get an email this afternoon that will have all of the union presidents and our um, parent leaders, our mayor and our board president that will share some other thoughts with you and welcomes to the school year. But we know that it's really important to end on time right now and let you know that we appreciate you. We want you to be able to get to your classrooms or get to your meetings or get to your breakfast breakfast if you haven't had it yet, or get to that important cup of coffee if you haven't had it yet, even better, and um, get started with your day. Um, I know that there are other things that um, you will participate in some active shooter awareness um, sessions today and some really important information that your building principals will share with you. So at this point, I will say goodbye and good luck. Have a wonderful start to your school year. I will be out and about visiting, but don't hesitate to either pick up the phone or shoot me an email and um, just know that we are all just a phone call away. Um, I appreciate all of you and all that you do. And I appreciate that you chose to either remain in Stanford Public Schools or join Stanford Public Schools. Thank you and have an excellent day. Take care.